Welcome back to This Is Van Color. We've been talking about scams tonight, and I know that so many of you are screaming at the television, screaming at me, screaming at you about how ICBC is the biggest scam in the entire province. Well, here to satiate your bloodthirst is my buddy, my counterpart on CBC Radio's On the Coast with Gloria Makarenko. Catch it Thursdays at 4.10 p.m. The coolest criminal defense lawyer on the left coast. She was supposed to be here today in studio, but unfortunately, she's stranded on the other side of the country. You can guess which airline to blame. Representing Acumen Law, she is Kyla Lee, and this is Kyla's Court. Kyla, thanks for doing this. First things first, as per check safety protocol, blink if you are okay. I'm okay, Mo. I wish I was in studio with you, though. Well, I wish you were here too, Kyla, but okay, let's give the people what they want. You got three minutes. Explain to us why ICBC is a scam. So ICBC is one of those things that feels like a scam, but it isn't. Because we think about when we buy insurance, that we're going to get protection in case something happens to us, that the insurer is going to step in, it's going to compensate us for our injuries, it's going to treat us fairly, and it's going to look after our rights and protections. And what we actually end up with ICBC is a company that's fighting against us to try and pay us as little money as possible. And this has been made all the worse since the introduction of the no-fault system. Now, ICBC essentially says that it's going to pay you for wage loss, it's going to pay you a dedicated amount of money for a certain injury. So it's going to determine the value of your injury before you even have that injury, even if that injury doesn't affect you as much or it affects you way more. If you break your finger and you're a piano player, a concert pianist, you're going to get less money than you deserve because you're going to be paid the same as if somebody breaks their finger and they never use their hands in any of their line of work. So this is obviously a problematic thing that really feels like you're getting scammed by the insurance company. And it's worse because usually when you think an insurance company isn't treating you fairly, you can take them to court, you can sue them, you can get compensation as a result of the court stepping in and enforcing that insurance contract. But the government has actually prevented you from being able to sue ICBC or sue for coverage in a motor vehicle collision by passing legislation that prohibits you from suing unless the person who hit you is charged with and convicted of a criminal offense. But here's the real trick, Mo. When they passed this legislation, they knew that most people in motor vehicle accidents aren't being charged criminally. They had already written a law to take impaired driving prosecutions out of the court, put them in their own government-run tribunal that prevents people from getting criminal convictions. So the vast majority of impaired driving incidents where you see accidents with injuries that may range from minor to severe are being dealt with through an impaired uh, a driving tribunal, the immediate roadside prohibition scheme, rather than being dealt with in court, which means nobody gets convicted, which means ICBC never has to compensate you for injuries as a result of a court case. And then, of course, there's people like me <laughs> who defend people in impaired driving cases, further reducing the chances that somebody's going to be convicted because defense lawyers are very effective at defending their clients, at poking holes in police procedure and police investigations, and keeping people from getting convicted, which keeps ICBC from having to deal with it through the courts. I mean, that sounds like a scam to me, but Kyla, isn't that the problem with car insurance in general? So what's the difference between ICBC, which is our only choice here in BC, and other auto insurance companies? You would think that, that this is the problem with car insurance generally. But British Columbia is one of very few places in the world where the government forces you only to buy their product. Generally speaking with car insurance, if we look at other jurisdictions, there's competition. So you can shop around. If you're not being treated fairly, you can take your money elsewhere. And the market and the choice available in the market allows companies to have to adapt to respond to a competitive marketplace. But when the government not only controls the law, it also controls and forces you to buy one insurance, that's where it ends up feeling like a scam because you have no other option available to you. Well, Kyla, I feel like that's going to get a lot of people talking. I really do appreciate your time tonight. Can't wait to have you back in studio. Safe travels home, my friend. Thanks, Mo. 
Folks, that's our show. Thank you to the most trustworthy, non-scammy people you'll know, my friends Sarah Berman, Dino Archie, and Kyla Lee for their time tonight. If you feel like you've been scammed, please send your complaints to the team at checkmedia.ca. For now, though, this is Van Color, and I'm Mo Amir, telling you that in a province where you can be anything, be colorful. Peace.